Good morning, everybody, and welcome. It is officially March 24th. I can't believe it had gone by this fast, but we are back. We are still on our book study, so we are back to talk about Exponential Living by Sherry Riley. And I don't know about you, but it was quite fun. It had been a lot of craziness going on, so it's fun to kind of sit still for a moment and be able to go through this book. So, in Exponential Living, Sherry really talks to stop spending 100% of your time on 10% of who you are and kind of like high achievers, how they can just go 100 miles per hour and you say, that's me. I say that's a lot of people, not just no, me. I think but it's you. Not just me, because there wouldn't be a book just made for me. It'd hey, have to be right. for a lot of people. Okay. So one thing that I really liked and that she started a book with, if, if your dreams aren't scaring you, then that's not big enough. And you know, when I think about me as seventh grader and the goals of being in the NBA and, you know, obviously shifting over to the WNBA and just every single day being super, super dedicated. Um, that was something, I don't know if it necessarily scared me. I think it was one of those things that was just like, I was so driven to it. And so like, as I read this book and as I kind of went through the different chapters, there's a lot of things that I saw for me that I will continue to do better. And, Probably one of the biggest things also off of that is personal development. Just mm -hmm. doing a better job of personally being developed, but then also how do I shift that into kind of my everyday world and everyday living. Yeah. And kind of along those same lines, it's funny that you would pick that quote out of the book after saying that you don't feel like you're going 100 miles per hour. Because um, what I took from the book was more so slow down, shift, and refocus on the things that really are important. Uh, the big thing that I took from it too was the importance of shrinking your to-do list and not continuously adding things mm. to it. And um, I like one of the quotes that she had in the book, if your calendar is full, <laughs> you're ineffective. And I think that sometimes we can kind of equate busyness with um, effectiveness mm -hmm. and that's kind of, and success. And that sometimes can be even further from the truth. I think it's important to slow down and relax and enjoy your days. It's good to have free time. It's good to have, it is. yes, no. <laughs> play time, recess, uh, but it is, it's important to kind of, what's, what's, what is so great about success if you're so, if you're too busy to enjoy it. Yeah, and Sherry did talk about that at some point in the book when her boss came in the office and she had her head down and she was working and he stood there for however long and finally, you know, she realized it was him and looked up and he said, you know, it's gonna be really hard for you to enjoy life if your head is always down. And yep. so, you know, I think what you just said about the calendar, mm -hmm. you know, what do you feel like in this time right now, obviously we've had time to be at home and mm -hmm. um, everybody has been quarantined to an extent and being at home. So what have you taken from this time? I think I've taken just, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself, to be completely honest. Um, I'm going crazy. I think that this is God's way of kind of saying, be still and focus on me, focus on what's really important. Uh, stop worshiping false idols. I know a lot of people have been disappointed. The NBA is not there, you know, oh, March Madness got canceled. That's been really hard, but that's not what really matters. You've got family, you've got friends to reconnect with, you know, just this time to kind of pour into yourself, read, sit your butt down, relax. <laughs> it's been awesome. Like my kids, you know, it's been fun to, to do the at-home learning and have a schedule. And I mean, I look at Cannon, he's in eighth grade, getting ready to go into high school. I've got four years with him. You know, that breaks my heart. So this time is a gift. Mm -hmm. So that kind of leads into probably one of the points, you know, we he said that we would have a takeaway and mm -hmm. we got a chance to talk a little bit about it before. What is something that you took away from this book? So the big thing I took away from the book is just kind of shifting from having a achievement first um, mentality to having more of a relationship first mentality mm -hmm. and um, just putting more worth in that instead of, oh, I got to have this and I got to have this much money. No, your relationships mean more than anything. And so she talks about the importance of defining, redefining success um, by pouring more energy into your relationships and nourishing um, 
these five key relationships. The first is your relationship with God, which, you know, just prioritizing that time with him for me, mm -hmm. it's the mornings and having my routine of really meditating in the morning, praying, reading a devotional, having a hot cup of tea. I can't start my day without that. So I don't know, I know you. Um, I think mine is more it's every day, all day. Mm -hmm. um, I do get up first thing and like while, while I'm still laying in bed, just kind of, I pray, mm -hmm. you know, silent prayer, because obviously Parnell's still sleeping, but um, a silent prayer of what, and then I start looking like what's going on in that day. But I feel like I do a good job of even throughout the day just praying little prayers mm -hmm. and how many times did somebody come to you and said, hey, will you pray for so-and-so? And you're like, oh yeah, I'll pray for them later. But really taking a moment to, to pray right then and there mm -hmm. about whatever it is and, and just being um, conscious of it even throughout the day. Absolutely. And even in that same line, part of my morning routine is also to journal and to write out my praises write out my prayer requests and then write out a short prayer. Mm -hmm. So it does kind of keep you grounded and focused and it's cool too to look back and see all these requests that you had that have now been praises and, and answered prayers. Um, the next is relationship with yourself. I think as women, especially as moms, um, that's one that was kind of hard to mm -hmm. read and go, oh wow, yeah, it is important to start making myself more of a priority. Um, it's so much easier for us to pour into everybody around mm -hmm. us and then save ourselves the last couple drops. So just the importance of kind of shifting that mindset. And um, I know this was this was good for me too. stop minimizing, devaluing who you are, um, clear your mind of self-defeating thoughts and then eliminate the need for constant validation from others. So you just have to love, honor and believe in yourself. I think that's a good one. Um... You know, over time, I feel like our, like we're so different because, you know, I do feel when you look at love language, start thinking about love language, like my love language has always been, you know, um, that one-on-one -on -one time, the quality time with people. Even though my life is crazy and I go and go and go, having those moments where I can just sit still with that person or with myself, you know, in the car, I like silence. I don't turn on the radio. I don't listen to podcasts. Most of the time, it's just me, God, and just like silent and, and just being able to have that moment. Um, I think validation, when you talk about the validation aspect, you know, not really feeling like I have to be validated by people or validated by things. I think it's more, I enjoy the things that I do. And so, you know, I get validation through the things that I do, but maybe in this book, being able to shift away from that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think in our society, one big thing I always preach on is just, how much I do not like social media mm -hmm. and I feel like social media has created a culture of constant need for let me post this picture see how many people like it let me let me do this let me you know and, and validation has to come from yourself mm -hmm. you can't put stuff out there and expect everyone around you to build your build you up you got to build yourself up well, and some of it is what you put out Absolutely. you know because some of the pictures that that do get put out are pictures that you know not necessarily are the greatest, um, what's the word, greatest image mm -hmm. of who you are. And maybe even in here it talked a little bit about false perception. So to some extent, is it the false you that you're really putting out there? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's a lot of yeah. social media. We've crafted images of, you know, what we want everybody around us to think we are. And I just, yeah, got to love yourself first. Yep. Um, the next one was another big one for me, relationship with spouse and just the importance of that. And I think, I mean, I've been married um, 10 years, going on 11 years, woo, woo. to years. a wonderful, wonderful man, um, very patient and kind and loving man. And it's so easy to, in the midst of everything around you, put that on the back burner and take it for granted because, oh, he'll be there. Oh, you know, nothing. I, I, you, yeah. So I just really need to get better about prioritizing mm -hmm. him. Um, recommitting to him uh, daily and just making sure that I'm you know fulfilling his needs and that we're taking time to do things together yeah and I think it's important you know through this time when we're all quarantined and we're all at home you know really being able to shift focus and I know you and I have talked about this a lot like oh you're always gone you need to you need to spend more time with your husband I've been married for four years and same thing to an amazing guy and you know he is super patient everything that I am not he is 
and I think that's why <laughs> that's why we are able to mesh it well as we do. But you know, Pastor just talked about making sure in this time that you recommit to your spouse, to your mm -hmm. partner, that you recommit that time and that you make sure that you're putting and giving 100%. But that's why we're here and now like we're stuck. But how do you transfer that to when life resumes and when yeah. we get back outside, like making sure that you're making that a constant commitment. Mm -hmm. And just like your schedule, you know, you have yes. a full schedule, make sure that, okay, every Friday or every other mm -hmm. Friday is a date night. Well, you guys a little do a harder. good job. Ah, uh, it's gotten harder lately, I yeah. think, especially when you throw in basketball and mm -hmm. all the other commitments, um, distractions, yeah. um, to just make sure that you do prioritize that. So mm -hmm. I thought that that was a good reminder. Uh, next up was relationship with children and just making sure that we're fully present for our kids. Uh, she shared a good example of how she went to her daughter's lacrosse game and, you know, yeah, she figured, hey, I can multitask and watch the game and be on the phone and my daughter will never know. And then after the game, she approached her daughter and her daughter was like, you weren't here, you weren't present. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good reminder for a lot of us parents, um, especially yeah. moms. We're always juggling. We're always trying to do, you know, a million things at a time and just to kind of remind us like if you're not giving your kids a hundred percent you're not fully engaged and fully present you're not there yeah. so i thought that was a really good reminder for me um make sure that you're pouring into them constantly preparing them um and not just giving them your scraps and your leftovers yeah well and i and i i mean it's relationship with children so i don't have kids my kids are my nephews and you know being around and being able to be a part of everything that they do so I really think that even for me, I can do better in mm -hmm. being more engaged and being more available, you know, because I do the multitask and try to make sure that I'm here and there and everywhere and people are pulling in all different directions. But I think after reading this book, being more committed to my nephews and being more committed to, you know, like you said, Cannon's going to be a freshman next year. Crazy. So having the four years with him to watch and see him excel in high school and of course Colton coming up and, you know, Kale getting to Harvard and having the opportunity to watch him in his last two years of college before he goes on to life mm -hmm. and you know Malik and Jamison I mean just going down the line like yeah. just being able to be present in be their present. lives. Yeah and even along the same lines one thing that I uh, pulled from the book earlier on was being more wise and having more mm -hmm. wisdom and distinguishing between opportunities and distractions. Yeah. And I think that you're someone, I mean, you, you shared with us that you feel like you could do better, you could be more engaged, but you've got all these other opportunities. Well, what opportun which opportunities are actually distractions mm -hmm. that are pulling you away from these other things that are so much more important to you? Yeah. So that was another good piece that I pulled. Um, and then the last one was relationships with friends. Ooh. And uh, that was a really eye-opening one too. Just yeah kind of the importance of friendships, especially in a day and age of cyber friendships mm -hmm. and uh, people that feel like, oh, I got hundreds of friends on Facebook or I got hundreds, you don't know. Social hundreds. media. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got all these followers. Those aren't your friends. Mm -hmm. Like you need to still make sure that you're maintaining those relationships and spending time and reaching out to the people that matter. How do you do that? I honestly do that. I don't post my business on social media if something great happens. But I mean, how do you stay engaged with your friends? I, well, I'm, I'm just, social media I, no, I'm just kid. saying, yeah. instead of posting yeah. for the world to see, I share those pictures and those things that are important to me with my friends. Yeah. Via text message, via phone calls, via emails. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a personal connection and a back and forth instead of, well, I just shared this with everybody all at once. Because I know even one of my best, best, best friends, Carly, um, one of my one of my reasons for turning, getting kind of turned off with social media back in the day was she had um, met a couple of my friends when she came out here and then they became Facebook friends. And Colton, I'll never forget Colton's first birthday party. Um, one of my friends that had only met her maybe for 15 minutes, but was a Facebook friend, came in and told me that she, my best friend had had her baby that day. Mm. And I don't get on social media, like I'm not, at that point I got on it more, but that broke my heart, you know, just kind of like, everybody I'm your real knows. friend and I didn't find that out, but you posted it and now everybody, you know, that really hurt. So I think really from a friendship standpoint, really figuring out or finding those, those relationships mm -hmm. and how you communicate. Yeah. So for her in that sense, 
it's not the fact that you're mad that she posted it. No. It's the fact that she posted it prior to you knowing exactly. and then you find out from somebody else. That wasn't a real friend. That wasn't a real friend. I was a real friend, not a Facebook friend. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, but, yes. but also that personal <laughs> connection because I think sometimes it's more, I think sometimes when you post things it could come off as not bragging but look mm -hmm. as opposed to hey this really important thing happened today like yeah. I want to share it with you you know so now we do better about even you know she'll send me videos of her kids doing stuff and I'll send her videos and things of Mike like it's yeah. more of a I don't think your life needs to be lived out in public for everybody to see but it's good to you know share those important moments and memories and make those connections with people that you really do love and, and care about. you know i mean real friendship just like anything all these five key relationships relationship with god self spouse or partner children and friend all five of them take work Absolutely. it's not like it's just something you wake up and it's like oh man i got these relationships and they're yeah. great so i think even from the friendship standpoint mm -hmm. it really is about you know leaning in and and being engaged yep. and being a true friend yep. and making them a priority and even little things like okay well I'm gonna have lunch with you this week let's get mm -hmm. it on the schedule yeah you know I want to sit down and and have a meal and talk yeah and share so basically overall I just love that she tied in the importance of those five key relationships and using those as more of a barometer for success instead of just achievements and money and fame and and whatever else you know those relationships are everything yeah i like it um five key relationships so i think probably the biggest thing that i pulled um i shouldn't even say biggest because i think i pulled a lot a lot from this but um principle five she's talked about stop working and start maximizing and you know when I was thinking through it, I'm like, okay, I like working. I, mean, I love, and I always tell people, I love what I do and all the jobs that I have, I love what I do. But sometimes it is like, okay, I gotta do this and I gotta do that and you know. So how do you stop as far as like just working and really start maximizing? So um, I love just how she kind of put it down and I talked about this earlier, just the, the head down and not being able to see opportunities because you're head down and you're always working so really just trying to recommit um as she went through it she said you know work drains you and maximizing energizes and elevates you and so the distractions that you talked about with the five you know five relationships and just the work and just how much i'm working how do you shift let go of the distraction mm -hmm. instead of working really focus on maximizing in the job and in the work that i'm doing and so you know i felt like for me that was something that i really this chapter i really took a lot from and it's like okay i'm going to start changing my mindset and really shift direction yeah. as we move forward yeah. yeah yeah i know even earlier on sorry to kind of jump around the book um she has a lot of really interesting um, but effective exercises mm -hmm. throughout the book. And one of them that I thought, oh gosh, this is kind of weird, was uh, writing your own obituary. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, writing your obituary from a standpoint of someone that really cares about you, and then rewriting that obituary, and then really thinking about what it is that you feel like your true purpose is, and that you want people to remember you for. And then look at your schedule and kind of see if what you're doing is aligning with those things that are truly important to you mm -hmm. and that you want to be remembered for. Well, I think that's hard, you know. I mean, I I started doing it and then I kind of, you know, went away and then came back, you know, just you know, going on. But, um, you know, I, I feel like for me, thinking about alignment, there's a lot of extra things on my plate. and. You know the distraction and but i mean I, I i say that and i can say it but now the next step is like all right like how do you push forward and how do you move to the other side where you you don't have as many distractions where you are able to shift focus where you are able to align with your purpose which is also you know one of the things that she kind of talked about was your one thing and that one thing using the acronym for one overall navigating edge like what is something that you're really really good at that when push comes to shove like this is my one thing i know i'm really good at this and so mm -hmm. that was an exercise that i actually like 
and didn't really get a chance to reach out to other people to say, hey, like, what's my what's my one thing that when you lean on me, you know what, what you can rely on? Mm -hmm. And same for you, you know, like, what's your one thing, I think, mm -hmm. for you? From my perspective, you know, the thing that I feel like your one thing you are really good at seeing something that needs to get done and being able to organize it from start to finish without being sidetracked, without being distracted. You're just really good at being able to focus. Now, I know I'm not that because it's like, oh, I see this, but I might go over here and then I might come over here and then I might do this. And, you know, there's emails that are in my draft that I started writing a couple days ago, but then I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to send the email out. I never finished it, you know, so I get distracted. But I think that you're really good at being able, like I know, hey, hey sis, can you do this or can you do that? Or even like some of the things you do with the boys. Mm -hmm. When you get focused on doing something, like you are all in, you're 100% focused, which, you know, I wish that I could have a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I've learned to give myself a lot of grace too. Like yeah. you, I think you put a lot of pressure no, on pressure. yourself in a sense. Um, but I would say your edge is passion. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that you're somebody that can't give 10% to anything. You have to give 100% to everything. And sometimes that can be, that's your superpower. But I think it's also, it could be your weakness at times too, because like she says, you can't, you can't give 100% to everything. You've got to figure out what it is. But you, I mean, whew, I'm the fever <laughs> I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to, you know, go and with you it. can't, and even tease me and the foundation. And I mean, everything, you're just, you get so fired up and passionate and excited about things and then that energizes the people around you to have that same mm -hmm. passion you're a leader um you've got a lot of great qualities but i would say that those probably are your top top ones so uh, overall did you enjoy this book i did it's a lot to digest yeah, and i will be completely honest that you know there's so many different exercises and activities i didn't want to just rush through it so i'm probably still going to go back and and really, uh, you know, read it again and and go through some of the um, exercises again. But yeah, it had a lot of really good messages. It definitely helped me to kind of refocus. And you know, I think that it's an excellent book to read right now, given that you've got this extra time um, to develop and pour into yourself. Yeah. All right. So this was my book, the Exponential Living by Sherry Riley. So. Um, Sherry, thank you for allowing us to read your book and had the opportunity to meet her last month at one of the events. So uh, really cool to be able yeah. to get the book, get to meet her and get to share it with my big sis. Yeah, that was awesome. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was great. So as we shift to next month, yep. this is your month. So you get the opportunity to pick the book. Yes, ma'am. Um, so my book, of course, we shift gears mm -hmm. back to kind of a more biblical, uh, devotional type of book. but. Um, this one, Rhythms of Renewal by Rebecca Lyons, and basically um, trading stress and anxiety for a life of peace and purpose. So this is another really good book to read, you know, especially given the, the times that we're currently in and just kind of talking about um, the importance of rest and rhythm and renewal. Mm -hmm. And you can't be on all the time and expect to to thrive and have peace. So it just talks about, um, you know, just rhythms and establishing different routines and it's very good. Yeah. Well, I think the when you look at shifting from the past book to this book, the one thing that I hear over and over again is peace. Peace. And yep. how do you find that peace? And, you know, in this moment where we are and with everything going on, mm -hmm. I think for me, like being able to get enough sleep, <laughs> for one, yeah, I've been getting enough, definitely enough sleep, but then, yeah, I do, I have a, a, a peace. Not that I didn't have it before, but you know, I just have a peace. I wake up and, you know, I get to read my book for, I get to, you know, like you said, the tea. I mm -hmm. have my cup of tea, I have multiple cups of tea every day, all day, mm -hmm. and just, it's just, uh, I don't know, there's just that presence of God around and, and being able to be where I'm supposed to be in this moment. Mm -hmm. And that's again why I believe that this time is a gift. Mm -hmm. It's a gift from God and, you know, just a chance to sit back and not be so busy yeah. and not have all these distractions and things. Um, but in this book too, she talks about just that, uh, this, this, the importance of taking charge of your emotional health mm -hmm. and inspiring people around you to do the same. 
And um, last thing I'll say, <laughs> inspiring people around me. Um, so she talks about the four life-giving rhythms, rest, restore, connect, and create. Mm. So those being kind of a rhythm, and if you look at the Bible, you know, that's what he did. He rested, restored, connected, and created, yep. and then repeated that rhythm. So I'm excited for you to slow down and read the book. You? What about you? And this renew. Is I know, but <laughs> I've already started the book. Uh, yeah, she, you are she, she, getting started. So yeah, but this is a good one. And I think we do. We live in such a busy world where it's like there's just so much chaos and crazy. And mm -hmm. and I've never been a person to to have a lot of anxiousness or anxiety. But I feel like over the last couple of years, I've started to kind of develop some. Not like debilitating anxiety, but I, I didn't really believe it was really a thing until now. And I think being a mom and you know just life and feeling like it's just always go 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 and stress and you gotta do this you gotta do that this is a good book okay well i'm looking forward to it yes. so i hope that all of you guys will go and get you a copy of this book we'll be back next month on april 24th of course and um rhythms of renewal by rebecca lyons we are thoroughly looking forward to reading this i want to thank Everybody, thank all of our subscribers, those that have already subscribed, and then I know we got a lot of new people that are watching, so I hope that you will subscribe as well, but um, we have been excited. This has been a journey that I've been on. This is my second year, and going into this year, I talked to my sister Taj, and kind of like, hey, I think we should do this together, because mm -hmm. she reads a lot, I read a lot, you know, you'll, you can kind of see we, we read different books but there's always kind of like the same underlying theme, I think. And so, um, yeah, this is why we, we get along very well now. I can't say that for our whole entire life, but that's what kids do, right? So want to thank you guys for tuning in and uh, look forward to seeing you guys next month. Thank you.